welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is you're probably very confused by this. Now the reason this is here is because Valerie from Gimme Lip and More asked to collab with me and I was delighted to agree and we decided to set each other a colour challenge where we had to use one colour all over our face. It could be shades of that colour but eyes, lips, cheeks, highlight, everything had to be shades of one colour. So, linked in my description box is Valerie's channel and Valerie's video. But if you want to find out exactly what colour the beautiful Valerie set me, then you are just going to have to watch this video. And once you've watched this video, you can nip across and watch Valerie's. And once you've watched hers, I'm sure all the ladies in the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group will also have new films for you to watch. So, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, find out exactly what colour I've got on my face. Here goes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, yeah, fingernail is still growing out from where I managed to completely rip my fingernail off. Um, so, uh, although it doesn't need this to hold plasters on anymore, um, when I'm doing anything in terms of makeup or anything that could get onto the actual nail bed itself while the nail's regrowing, I prefer to keep it covered. Also, I prefer this to using a stumpy half nail because I know some people would be a little grossed out by seeing my actual nail bed. Right, um, I've probably briefly explained in the intro but uh, this is a collab video. The beautiful Valerie from a Gimme Lip and More messaged me uh, asking if I'd like to collab and I jumped at the, uh, the chance because she is really really such a lovely woman um, if you enjoy my films because my voice is relaxing and it's calming you will love Valerie because she is also very softly spoken very calming very measured I find watching her videos extremely relaxing so if you enjoy mine you are definitely going to enjoy hers um, and she's a nurse as well, so you know she's exactly what you would want from a nurse. She, you just, you just know from watching her videos what sort of nurse she is. You can imagine her bedside manner, and you know if you're in a hospital bed in pain, that's exactly the kind of nurse you are going to want. So, what is our collab? Well, we set each other a challenge, a colour challenge. To use one colour for eyes, cheeks, lips, highlight. Obviously not foundation, obviously not brows. But to do a very monochromatic look. I'm not going to tell you what colour I challenged her to do. When you've watched mine you are going to have to go over to her channel to find out. But, the colour she set me was orange. So, pretty sure you can all guess which palette I've reached for. It's my slush palette from September Rose because I love the fact it's got such a strong magnet. Look at that beautiful row 
of orange shades and public service announcement my code bomber in all caps still works on her website uh, it is a permanent code it's non-affiliated I don't earn from it um, but it will get you 10% off any order over 10 pounds I was talking with a mate of mine yesterday Rachel because um, I was showing her how to use loose pigments and stuff um, and we both agreed one of the reasons we find this particular layout so pleasing is that it's not dotted around all over the place they're all in neat rows of colour so not only is it visually very pleasing it's also really easy to use for learners as well because you know if you want to do a monochromatic look you can do and what's also very clever is that the colours either side of each row will work so purples will work with blues blues and orange will work with greens orange will work with reds reds will work with purples so it's really really helpful especially for learners or people who are not confident in um, using bright colours as to which colours will actually work with each other so enough blethering let's get you zoomed in and let's start putting some colour onto my face how's your day been so far I hope it's been a good one or if you're at the start of your day I hope it's going to be a good one um, yeah as you can see I've got very very um, my my hyperpigmentation is showing up an awful lot today it's because I'm in a lot of pain and I've not slept well so it always shows on my face now all I have got on my eyes so far I've washed moisturized SPF and primed my skin and then I put um, revolution conceal and define on my brows blended it uh, on my lids rather blended it out and set it with my Coty air spun now when I look straight ahead let me see we're in just a fraction more there we go that's better when I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile eyelid from inner corner to outer corner now if when you look ahead you don't see that you've either got a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as an Asian or a mono eye. Now you can still follow my tutorials. When I lay my crease colour down, I'm actually going to follow the bone here in my eye socket. What you need to do with your eye open, get a flat top brush, something like this, and just really carefully sketch out where you need your crease line to fall. Now obviously that is going to reduce the amount of space you've got between your crease colour and your brow. Now I've got very very deep set eyes um, so I'm lucky um, although it means that I do have a lot of hyperpigmentation and staining I've always got dark circles because my eyes are so deep set regardless how much sleep I have or haven't got <clears throat> But, completely lost my train of thought then. Um, there's a number of ways you can actually get round, but if you've got less space here, either because you've raised your, your crease up, or if you've actually got quite low brows anyway. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be starting off with a big brush like this, and then moving down to a more tapered one like this. Now try raising your eyebrows because you'd be amazed how much extra space that does give you. If you're still really restricted, you know, if when you put the brush there it's over your brows, clearly that's not going to work for you. So instead of starting with this size, you need to start with this size and when I move down to this, you need to move down to a slightly more tapered one like this or 
uh, like this, which is the juggling brushes now. This is the tapered crease brush from Coastal Scents. Right, time to stick some colour on. Yee. This is the fun bit. Um, I think I'm going to start off with Peach Lemonade. Now, with this palette, I've got my colour switch over here for changing colours. You do get quite a bit of kick up in the pan, if you can see there on that first one. This isn't a problem because it means you're getting pigment onto your brush. Uh, don't dust that off because when we go back in to pick up more pigment, we can just pick up the loose pigment on the top. So it's not going to get wasted. Sorry, that's my phone vibrating. Uh, nothing important that I need to deal with, so that can wait. Okay, so starting from the outside corner, we're going to initially lay a crease line down by doing windscreen wiper movements backwards and forwards <clears throat> and we do this so we can work out exactly how <clears throat> I am so sorry I proper croaky this morning let me have a drink <clears throat> right let's try that again um, <clears throat> It, you then see exactly where your crease is going to fall, so you can decide whether you need to move it up, move it down, etc. Now, to blend this up the eye, because I've lost a lot of weight over the last uh, few years, I've lost over 10, 11 stone, or uh, 140, 150 pounds for those of you who are American, um, or Canadian that deal in pounds, um, and because I'm 44, the skin on my eyelids moves. So it can be quite difficult when you're blending shades up to make sure you don't get areas that have got white spaces. Because that's a dead giveaway that you're getting older. <clears throat> now, I'm going to talk you through everything step by step so that even complete novices can follow this. If you are faster than me at blending, Please speed me up. I will not be offended. Okay, that's what the speed button is there for. But I want all abilities to be able to follow this tutorial. So, keeping the bottom bristles in contact with the crease line, we're going to do little tiny circles following the crease line across to the nose. And then without lifting the brush off of our skin, we're just going to move it up slightly, reverse the direction, and come back out again. And then because I've got deep set eyes, I can actually go up a third time. And do a third stripe back across. Now, I like to leave sort of four or five mils below the lowest part of my brow. So that when I put a brow highlight on, it really stands out. So, once you're happy with the amount of pigment that you've got laid down, if necessary, pick up a little bit more and add a wee bit more. Remember, it's much easier to add than it is to take away. I very often struggle with this corner and just here because of creasing, so I very often have to put just a little bit of extra work just into those areas just to build the pigment up I'm really sorry if you can hear the neighbours to build the pigment up to the level that I want now that's the depth of colour that I want but to make sure that everything is totally blended we're now going to go back to our windscreen wipers, but we're going to do them in shorter segments and we're going to overlap them. So we're going to start here and we're going to very gently just buff backwards and forwards. And then when we reach our crease line, go across a bit and come back up again. And go across and come back up again. And do this all the way across the eye. And then we can use a mixture of circles and windscreen wipers 
just to make sure it's totally blended and we don't have any patchy areas or any areas of white or whatever shade your skin is if you're lucky to be more melanin enriched than myself. Okay, so you can see that having a big brush like this makes it so easy for blending out. If you have had to start with a slightly narrower brush it probably will take you just that little bit longer to blend it out just because the brush head is smaller so obviously it's not going to blend it out quite as wide. All right. And now we're going to repeat and do exactly the same thing. Now with this side, because I'm blinding this side, I can close it. So you're going to see two different application methods. One with my eye open, because if I close this eye, there's not a lot of makeup's going to be happening. And one with an eye closed. Okay. Now I know a lot of people struggle with actually just closing one eye, which is why I like to give you the two different methods of application. Now, with this side, because it got pulled around an awful lot at the ophthalmic hospital when I was like five or six, I've got very, very deep creasing in the corner here. If I gently pull my lid out, you can probably see there's striping here. Now, unfortunately, I have found from experience that normally when you do the circles, because it moves the skin of your eyelid around, it will normally stop any of that creasing and blur it out for you. Um, I very often find with mine, because the creases are so deep that side, I very often have to, like I just did then, pull the lid out ever so gently. Do not do that with your lid if circles works for you or you will end up with creasing like I've got and I can assure you it will only get worse as you get older. So, I pick up the kick up and it's circled. Now when I'm doing these, I'm always holding the brush right at the very end. So I'm putting as little pressure on the skin of my eye as possible. Because the skin on your eyelids and your under eyes is the thinnest skin you have on your body. So if you pull it around too much, it will show signs of age far, far quicker than anywhere else does. Okay. If you imagine the skin on your body to be, um, say, letterhead paper or, um, you know, and the skin on your feet and your knees and your elbows would be um, like thin cardboard, like an exercise book cover, the skin on your eyes is tissue paper. That's how gently you have to treat it. So again, I'm just popping extra pigment onto any areas that had creasing and uh, is being a little bit stubborn about taking your pigment. If you do get somewhere like this that doesn't want to take pigment, just pop some on your brush and just tap, 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 instead of doing the circles and you will find that that will actually then build and blend the colour for you. Okay, so I'm happy with the depth of colour. It's time to windscreen white in stripes across my eye just to make sure it's totally blended. And as I said, I then like to do just like a little mixture of both just to really make sure that every patch of my lid is covered and saturated in beautiful colour. Beautiful colour. Okay. Now. Mm. I'm going to change brushes. So if you've started with this brush, now's the time to go down to either a more tapered one, like this, or a tapered crease brush like this. Okay, I don't know. You can see the difference in widths there, I hope. And I am going to go into Tiger's Blood. 
which is a lovely deep orange. And I'm initially going to just press that very gently on the outside third of my eye while looking down just to build some pigment up on that corner there. Oh, how stunning is that? Right, and then I'm going to go in and pick up the kick up and tap off. And then I'm going to run this through my crease in exactly the same way we started the last colour. But this time, when I do the twirly whirlies, I'm not going to take the brush up my eye at all. all right, I'm going to keep these bottom bristles in contact with that line at all times. I'll show you what I mean. So, little circles. Now last time we lifted the brush up our eye. We're not going to do that. We're still going to change the direction of the, the circles though. But we're just going to come back still touching that crease line. Okay. And we're just going to do that a few times just to really build up the depth of colour and give a very, very pretty gradient. Now, once I'm happy with the depth of colour I've got there, you can see how much difference that makes to the eye. I'm just going to clean any excess pigment off of my brush using my colour switch. As you can see, it does stain your brushes, but it comes out. Um, you know, when you do your deep clean, it will come out. It's fine. But just to show you, there is no pigment on that brush still. Because I'm as pale as a freshly drawn pint of milk, so you would see it if there was any pigment coming off of that. So what I'm going to do, very gently, when the two colours meet, I'm going to do very, very tiny, tiny circles and buffing, just to soften the edge of that line, to really blow that edge out so that it, it I might pick, I'm just going to go back into Peach Lemonade, which is the lighter shade. I don't want to lose any of that colour. And I'm actually going to use that lighter colour to help blend this deeper colour. So you can see that's really softening that line, making it far more difficult to say, oh, that's where that colour ends and that's where the next colour starts. And that's what we want. We want to really blend so that it just slowly fades as it comes up the eye. Okay? And then, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. But obviously this side, I can actually close my eye when I'm stamping the pigment on. Which can make quite a bit of difference. done a completely orange look with this palette yet so I'm really quite pleased that this is the colour that Valerie chose for me because you all know I'm not the sort of person that only wears bright colours in the summer uh, if it's a wet Wednesday in December which one I'm filming this it currently is Quite happy to bung bright orange all over my face. And it will be all over my face today. Right. Oh, sorry, I've got such an itchy nose. The hubby um, gave the tree outside a trim, and I think the last of the pollen from that's affecting me. Right, and then again, run that through the crease. 
to deepen the colour up. Can you see what I mean now about the tiger striping that I get, or the barcoding? So I'm just going to, without adding any more pigment onto this brush, I'm just going to really gently blend that section there. Just that it's not quite so obvious that I've got a crinkly lid. Right, now time to do the circles again, but staying in contact with that crease line. Now you can see what I mean, I'm really struggling just here lately to get pigment to stick. Which appears to be my eyelids because um, even palettes that I've not had problems with in the past are struggling at the moment to get pigment to lay down just there. So um, I don't think it's the palettes that are the issue, I think it is just my skin playing around. Uh, change of season and everything, it's obviously having its... Like when cats shed their summer coat for their winter coat would appear my eyes are having a I'm going to muck you about a moment. So let's go back to my blending which I was doing, keeping in contact with that line at all times. Just to get the depth of colour that I want. Just check that that's, that's uh, still looking good. That's awesome. Right, clean the pigment off of the brush and initially just go very gently over the edge without any pigment at all to help blend it. And I'm going to go back into Peach Lemonade, the lighter colour, and just use that to help buff that colour out so that we don't lose that really beautiful light peach that we'd already laid down. Mm, I like that. I like that a lot. Now, I have two options for shimmers in this palette for the orange. Uh, shall I go for the lighter one or the deeper one? Do you know what? I think I might do both. So, I've got a Spectrum A16 here, which is a flat packer brush that's narrow, and this is a so eco brush. Let me just clean some of that pigment off of the end there. Um, now I've had this so eco brush for so long and I've cleaned it so many times that the names actually come off of it. So I can't tell you exactly what they call this on their website, unfortunately. Okay, just clean the darkest of that pigment off. Right, let's try that again shall we? So I've got my little narrow one here and then a wider one here but they're both very very slim in profile as you can see. And I will be applying the shimmers wet and I'm going to use this Makeup Obsession Pigment Boost. Now, you don't have to use something that's specifically called a pigment boost. You can use a moisturising spray like a MAC Fix Plus or a Mario Badescu. You can use a priming spray, you can use a setting spray, you can even use clean water. But the most important thing is never put a wet brush into a dry palette because you will get hard pan. And then you're going to find it really difficult to pick colour up. So, I'm going to go into Mango. I'm just going to pack some pigment onto this smaller brush and then I'm going to spray it 
I always, when I do this, wipe the ferrule dry so that you don't get too much moisture on the base of the brush and bristles, otherwise that's what loosens them. I'm going to use this to apply this lighter shimmer to the inner corner of my eye. Like so. Let me get my little mirror out so I can look down into it easier. Okay. And then I clean the pigment off of the brush and then dry it on my hand to make sure it's totally dry before I go back in again. So, back into the mango shade, pack the brush, spray the brush, wipe the ferrule dry, and then with this one I do have to actually hold the lid out ever so slightly, just to get into that corner without getting any creasing, otherwise it creases and then it crumbles on me during the day. Now obviously if you wanted to, you could actually do um, a cut crease here where you lay um, concealer down and then pack these pigments on top but I didn't want to do a cut crease today I just wanted something a little more subtle so clean the pigment off of the brush now I'm going to use the larger brush and I'm going to go into a tropical fruit, load pigment onto that, same thing with spraying it, same thing with drying it, but then we're just going to apply this to the middle bit of the eye, fading it carefully into the mat in the corner and then just really gently feathering it over the lighter shade that we have just used now the orange shimmers in here are more of a satin than a shimmer but I actually quite like that because I'm going to go over this in a minute with um, some peach highlighter anyway this is really for the, the depth of colour that I'm doing this. I'm really sorry if you can hear my stomach grumbling, it has been fed. I had a toasted bagel for breakfast. With strawberry jam. So, again, gently feather it into the Oh, it might help if I'm actually in screen, wouldn't it? Gently feather it into the matte shade there, and again into the lighter satin shade there. Such a pretty palette. I have so much fun with this palette, I really do. Right, now over here, in its very sexy little case, I have got the Revolution Renaissance Illuminate. It's called Radiant in Rose, but it's actually peaches and oranges, as you can see. Well, I've got some fallout, just as well I haven't done the face yet. I always get more fallout this side because the eye moves more. And I'm going to go back in with my little narrow 
brush and I'm going to go into this middle shade here and with it just dry I'm just going to pull this onto the inner third of the lid just to give a little bit more lightening in that corner And then do the same this side. And just very gently, with that dry pigment, just brush it over the top like that, just to add a little bit of brightness just to the inner corners there. Right. I am going to go off screen, do my foundation, etc. And I will be back to finish this look off. For you, it's going to be instant. So please don't go anywhere. Hey, I'm back. Right, as you can see, foundation is on. I used a medium brown brow pencil because that pulls a little bit more orange on me. Um, I used my butter bronzer for my contour bronze because that is the one that has got the most warm tones to it. Now for, uh, for blush, it still smells great. I'm going in with the L'Oreal Life's a Peach because again this is the closest I've got to an orange blush oh, shall I add some of this on when I say some I of course mean a crap ton because I put less bronzer on today so I could actually do more blush because obviously I knew that the blush was orange or peach and the bronzer was not. I'm not going to do eyeliner today because my eyes have been quite runny. Um, I'm going to go in with this Revolution Peach highlight again even though I think it is a little bit too deep for me but I shall go in with a little mini fan brush and I shall mix these end two colours here to try and get as orangey a highlight as I can get See, I can't even go to my Jeffrey ones because he's got pink and he's not got orange. I mean, the closest he's got is like, I suppose like a mix of pink and a yellow. That would probably make a peach. But as I've got this peach highlight, I'm hoping that Val doesn't see this as cheating. Oh, I did go a little bit ham with that blush today, didn't I? Oops. Oh. Yeah, this highlight's definitely too dark. But the one on the end that I normally use as highlight, because I normally use these two as a blush topper, and then just use the end one as highlight, but the end one is cream and doesn't have any orange or peach in it 
at all. It's starting to look a little bit like Aunt Sally from Wurzel Gummidge, but never mind. Right, let's zoom in and finish the eyes off. Oh Lord, look at that. Maybe I need to use my powder just to just to take a little bit of that down on my nose. I was looking a little bit sunburnt. <coughs> this is what I love about challenges. You never quite know what you're going to get. Right. I'm going to go in with that flat brush that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into Tiger's Blood, which is the deep one that we used through the crease. You're a little bit far out, I think you are. That's better, isn't it? I'm just going to carefully run that just underneath the lashes. going about two thirds of the way along and I should do the same this side. Now I always flinch doing this side because obviously I haven't got any peripheral vision so I'm kind of relying on my viewfinder and my muscle memory to not poke myself in the eye and regular viewers will know I'm not always successful at that. can't see but I've got my tongue sticking out with concentration. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with another flat top brush but this time it's much much thicker as you can see. And I'm going to go into orange soda which is the only one of these oranges I've not used yet and it's this gorgeous neon orange and I'm just going to use that just to buff along that lower lash line and really blend that deeper colour out you can see, you can really see that neon, at least I hope you can it's really showing up well in my viewfinder I hope when I come to edit it that it's showing up that well as well on the actual film. And you can see I'm actually dragging that right up to the corner of my eye. Oh, faces I'm putting that you can't see right now. Can anybody do this and put mascara on with their mouth closed? I don't think I seem to have mastered that art at all. There, yeah, I like that. Right, just dug my nail straight into the blue. Fabulous. Well done, Bomber. Clean that brush off. I'm going to go back into my little rosy highlight, well, itchy highlight, and I'm going to take the middle one and just pop it on in a corner there, dragging it down underneath. You can see where it's actually on my skin rather than over the top of an orange. It does actually look brighter, which is what I was hoping would happen. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Just what what you're hearing there is my knee against a. A vinyl tablecloth, by the way. I 
if you're hearing that. If not, I'm just sounding like an absolute loony, which, let's face it, it wouldn't be the first time. And I sincerely doubt it will ever be the last. I'm going to mix those two together again and just do the top lip. Like I said, I don't really want to put too much on there because otherwise it's going to look sunburned again. Fantastic. Not really the look one's going for. Now, I am going to go into this Jeffrey Star lipstick. I'm just trying to decide which shade I'm going to use. I've got two here. See, I think this one is it's too pinky peach, isn't it? So... Yeah, this one is yummy from his summer 2018 collection. And what I'm going to do... I've got disposable spoolies. So I'm going to coat the spoolie with some lippy because Jeffrey's lipsticks. I need to go a little bit further into the bottle, I think. There we go. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Just trying to be clever and just use the stuff at the top. All of Jeffrey's lipsticks are eye safe. The only stipulation he makes is that the ones that contain red 40, which is like your pinks, your reds, I'm guessing your orange, um, and purples, can stain. But, to be honest, an oil-based cleanser tends to take it off anyway, so it's really not a problem. It's a shame they're not showing up a little bit more. Normally when I do this, I'll do a more neutral eye look so that the lashes really stand out. But obviously, my theme of today was orange, so orange it will be. It is actually coating the lashes as you can, I hope you can, there you go, if I turn sideways you can actually see the lashes are orange. Yeah, right, chuck that spoolie away. Time to put some lipstick on. I do love Jeffree Star lipsticks. They're just so comfortable to wear. Let's zoom you back out. Oh, that's in. <coughs> that's very 
very orange. So I suppose this is the closest I've got to an orange coloured bottle of fixing spray. This is a vanilla and coconut. So it is time to liberally douse our faces. Because once we've made this amount of effort, we want it to stay put. Maybe. Now, most people would stop here. I, I'm not most people. I'm a little bit extra, so I'm going to use a little bit extra. You don't have to, if you don't want to. Hmm. Right. I'm going to pause you briefly while I do something with this mop of hair and I'll be back for my little roundup at the end. Well, it seems my hair is also protesting today and has decided to do whatever it wants. Right, so here is my final colour challenge look of orange as set to me by Valerie from Gimme Lip and More. Now this lipstick, when you press it together, you get little gold mica. Let's see if, you can, see if the camera can pick it up. I don't know if you can see that. But it does come out with a beautiful gold mica which under sort of candlelight or during daylight when you're outside and not under these LED lights that I've got going um, really really sparkles really shines uh, it's very similar yummy is very similar to pumpkin pie in that respect this is just a brighter version of pumpkin pie because that also had the mica on as always slush palette performed fabulously as I expected it to um, and as I said normally I would not go for quite so heavy a blush and quite so dark a highlight but the challenge was set I hope you feel that I've made a reasonable pass of it and now if you enjoyed this it would be awesome if you could hit that like button comment share subscribe when you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications so that you get told every time I upload another one of these films. And talking of another one of these films, I've got an awful lot to choose from now. Have you seen all of them? Why don't you have a quick look at the playlists and see if there's anything that you may have missed. And once you've watched and liked and commented and shared on all of mine, then you really need to go over and see what colour I set Val as her challenge on Gimme Lip and More. I will link both her channel and the video in my description box. And as is always linked in my description box, it's the other ladies from the a Beauty a YouTuber a Growth Group who have small channels just like myself and I'm sure they'd be delighted to welcome you into their little families the same way you've been welcomed into mine. Right, all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.